And I will put the lie to the individuals of the NIH, particularly Gallo and Fauci and Hazeltine and Essex and the rest of these scoundrels of the worst order. Criminals guilty of genocide, without a doubt. I invite them to take me to court. I wish Burroughs Welcome would take me to court because they have been putting out a killer drug knowingly. Because in a court of law, I would have the opportunity to, pro to provide the absolute proof and evidence, as I have in my book, Deadly Deception. Now, I'm not alone in what I'm doing here today. How does the press escape such obvious truths? Why would the finest virologist in the world, the most noted virologist, member of our National Academy of Sciences, Peter Duesberg, why would he put his entire career on the line? What did he have to gain? He's already lost his laboratory and his funding. They can't take away his professorship because he's tenured. Why would a Charles A. Thomas, professor emeritus of Harvard, say the same thing? Why would Carrie Mullis, who won the Nobel Prize in virology last year, why would he stick his neck out? What did he have to gain? These are the questions reporters should be asking. And in order to sell a book, I would inoculate myself with a virus that supposedly is deadly. Ever think that maybe we all know something that you just don't get? That if you take the virus out of the equation, you have a perfectly understandable disease with a perfectly understandable answer. And I might remind you, in case you are not aware of it, and if you haven't read my book, that we have known what causes acquired immune deficiency diseases for at least 70 years. It's in the medical textbooks. It's there for you to read. Number one cause on the face of this earth is malnutrition and starvation. That's Africa. Look to the headlines of the October 3rd issue of the London Times, Sunday Times, last year. And the inside headlines that screamed across two pages, the plague that never was. Speak to Philip and Evelyn Krinan, who head partage with an organization of 250 people, their own hospital, their own doctors, their own laboratories, who have lived in the heart of the epidemic, supposedly, or the supposed epidemic, for five years. There is no epidemic. It doesn't exist. They are there. They're not some character who goes through from the World Health Organization and says, oh, I've seen the people dying. Of course you have. We all saw them on television in Somalia. What do you think you were looking at? That was AIDS. Due to starvation. Due to malnutrition. It's no big secret what's causing AIDS. We've known it for 70 years. Number two is drugs. And don't just think of street drugs. Because the number one cause of AIDS today is actually two medical drugs. AZT. A drug that was discovered in the 60s as a chemotherapeutic drug for cancer and was shelved because it was too toxic to treat cancer, a drug worse than cancer. It's being too used to treat people who are immunosuppressed. Now let's go back to the other causes of AIDS. So it's not only street drugs but medical drugs, but now three is radiation. Whether they worry about it, Chernobyl and Nagasaki and Hiroshima. But number four is chemotherapy. Number four. The number four cause of death of acquired immune deficiency diseases. Chemotherapy. And the most toxic chemotherapeutic drug of all times, AZT is what they're now using to treat AIDS. And the Concord study completed last year 
Now, can you imagine saying to the world, where were the press? Where are you people? Here, they're giving a drug that costs thousands of dollars a year, and it doesn't do any good? That's if you want to believe that. But did anybody here bother to look at the insert, the paper that comes with the drug? It's a DNA terminator. It means it is a terminator, just like the movie. It terminates life. You terminate DNA, you terminate life. And they talk about side effects in the insert. When are you going to learn there is no such thing as a side effect in medicine? It's an unwanted direct effect. And you know what one of the unwanted direct effects of AZT is? Lymphoma, cancer, one of the diseases of AIDS, as they call it. Oh, another so-called side effect, which is really an unwanted direct effect, pancytopenia. You need a definition? Pancytopenia. Pan, all, cyto, cells, penia, loss of, loss of all your cells. That's AIDS. That is the definition of AIDS. So AZT, by definition, by their own drug insert, causes AIDS, and nobody survives AZT. That will eventually lead to your death. And they've cut the dosage way down because it was killing them too fast. It's like giving somebody a large dose of strychnine and they die within five minutes. And so the next person, you give them a, a, a few drops of it and they last four or five days and you say, strychnine's a wonderful drug. This person lasts five times longer. This is the kind of thing that they present to the world. Now, I have offered for over a year now, and I continue to offer it, $100,000 to anyone who will give me one scientific document that proves that HIV causes any serious disease. It doesn't. It is a scandal and a scam beyond belief. The virologists who are responsible for this, what do they have to gain? Now, I don't know what Dewsbury had to gain or Charles A. Thomas or Carrie Mullis. He already got his Nobel Prize. Why does he come out and say it? And he's the one that found the test. The uh, PCR reaction. And he said that there is no body of evidence that supports that the virus causes any disease whatsoever. But what about the individuals who have perpetrated this lie? They are all multi-millionaires. What do we have to say about the National Institutes of Health when a private laboratory, independent laboratory, found AZT to be 1,000 times more toxic than the laboratory of the NIH. We can understand a 5% error in a laboratory, even a 10% error. But a 10,000% error or 100,000% error? That's fraud. And as I understand that the word has gone out and there's even documents and letters to prove it, that the CDC, the same organization that let blacks go untreated with syphilis, well documented, just to see what would happen with the disease. This same organization who had to admit that they can't give, on an, give in on the AIDS thing now because nobody would ever be able to trust the government. I think the last election tells us what the people think about government. But science is acting no differently than politicians do. And now we have disease by politics. Isn't it strange that the same day or the day after Robert Gallo filed for a test for HIV after it was announced? This sounds like premeditation. You mean he just happened to have this test available? And so the same day or the following day, he filed for a patent? He had a test. He was simply looking for some kind of a disease he wanted to apply it to.